Thank you very much. So I'm really happy to be here, and I'm really glad that so many of you have came. I really like America. I'm from Europe, so I really like America, and uh, especially the movies you create. Every movie teaches something to us, like that you can apply in your real life. For example, how many of you saw the Terminator movies? At least one episode. Yeah, good. Or the series 100? Oh, no one. Okay, but the Terminator movies uh, teach one thing, that if you let machines or softwares fully out, so run fully autonomously without any control, you will be killed. In case of Terminator, all of the humanity almost killed. So, right? So what's the best way to have control over a fully autonomous system? It's with a button. So hence the title of my presentation, One Button Release, because we have a continuous delivery system, which is fully autonomous, but we have a button. But there is a trick, the button is not where you think it is. So follow along the presentation and you will see where it is. Uh, I am Alpar Garbosch, the Android team, uh, at Prezi, let's see, yeah, Android team at Prezi. Prezi is a presentation software company, if you don't know. Uh, this created in Prezi, so you will see how it works. And we have iOS and uh, Android application as well. Uh, I will mainly talk about the Android part, because that's my uh, area of expertise. But before we start, let me tell you a little story. When I joined Prezi, I joined to the web applications team. And I still remember the first time when I created the first big project there. It was the bold italic feature. And I remember that I pushed uh, the last lines of code into our version control system. And after half hour, I started to see on the graph that users started using it. So users created bold and italic uh, texts. And they left some comments also that, oh, it's cool, finally you have this feature. And it was a phenomenal feeling. So this is what a good continuous delivery system could do for you, to provide a good feeling that you just wrote something and it's almost instantly out there for the users to use. And when we created the Android team, I wanted to get the same feeling, so I wanted to create the same system. But as we know, mobile ecosystem is not as major as the web ecosystem, so it's harder to create one. But not hard or not impossible. So that's what I want to prove in the next 20 minutes. So how it, so let's walk it through on our continuous delivery system, so how it works. Uh, when we start creating a feature, we create a feature branch, and we put all of the code into the feature branch. And when we are ready, we put into, so merge it into the master branch. And when we merge into master branch, our CI system, Jenkins, that's an open source system, Jenkins, we realize that there is a new code on the bench. So it starts a build job. This build job does two main things. One is checks the source code quality, and the other one is creates the APK, the different APKs. So source code quality check. So this is not checking the functionality of the code, but checking that the source code is good. So for, the, for that, we use static analyzing tools like Lint, that's the built-in in Android. And it checks like, um, as Drew mentioned, for internalization, for example, but also for performance optimizations, um, accessibility, and also potential bugs. So Lint is pretty comprehensive. We use also check style to avoid flame wars that where you should put the parentheses, the end or the start. So it's pretty good. You have an automated system that checks that Okay, parentheses in the right place, the indentation is right. Uh, we use PMD for catching programming flows, like empty try-catch blocks uh, or unused variables. 
You also use find bugs, which is which tries to find uh, bugs in the Java code. It's not Android specific, but Java specific, but it helps to find some bugs in your Android code. And the last one is Facebook Infer. This is a, this is a new thing, and it only checks two things, but it does it really well. One is for checking null pointer exceptions or possible null pointer exceptions, and the other one is for checking resource leaks. This is the only tool that checks resource leaks, so it's uh, worth it to put it there. Our whole Gradle quality script is just this long, so it's not that hard to do it. Uh, I will provide the, uh, my slides so you can get it, so you can just copy it over and use it. So this, this is the whole thing. So it's really easy to, to have it. And I don't see why you don't want to use it if it's, it's really easy to, to do. But if you say that, oh, it's too much, five different ones, too much, then I would suggest to use Lint and Facebook Infer. Okay. Uh, when, we, when we made sure that our code uh, quality is right, we create APKs. We create two APKs, one is for release that we will put in the Play Store, and the other one is an offline version. The offline version is, is for testing. We mocked out the network layer, so we won't get the flakiness from the network when we are running tests. So when we build the offline version, we can start testing. So this is uh, the representation of our uh, test distribution in our test suite. Uh, this, this complies to the test pyramid theory, which says that most of your tests should be in the base level, so in unit level, because it's, uh, they test really small part of your code, uh, and they are really fast, so you can run it uh, every time on your local machine too. So that's why you have to have most of your tests there. And also, their, their coverage should be around 80 or 90 percent. The next level is a little bit slower. That's the acceptance and integration tests, uh, usually using some, uh, some complicated test frameworks. Uh, and, they are, and because of that, it's, they are slower. And also, they are checking for the whole features to work, it works or not. So that's why they're so well. So you should write less of them. And they are really brittle and uh, prone, error prone to changes. Also, most of the time UI tests are system level tests, not the layer UI tests that Drew mentioned, but uh, this, this whole UI test that you run the whole application and you, uh, and you check the button is there and the button is working. And when you click the button, the whole system kicks in. So that's why you, have, you should write less and less uh, UI tests. I added two new levels there. Uh, the st the stress-level tests. Uh, stress levels, you can't see it, but I will tell you. <laughs> so stress, uh, stress tests, it's really easy to do on Android, that's why. And uh, most of one is manual tests. I am really against manual testing, but I am kind of sensible, you whom human being, so I know that there are things that does not work to automate, or it's kind of almost impossible to do it. Like, for example, checking the smoothness of a scroll, of a list scroll. You can do it, it's kind of hard, and probably it won't work it. So like, when you are developing it, if you just check the smoothness, it's good, then okay. So this, uh, this is a test pyramid. Um, so let's see what we use in different levels. So in unit test levels, in unit test level, we use, we're still using RoboElectric because um, the testing support library was released not long ago, and before that, there was this was the only way to f to run your test on the GVM and not on an emulator. So it, the point of the UI, uh, the unit test, that they should be fast. And if they're running on an emulator, they are not fast, right? So that why, that's why we use RoboElectric and still most of our tests are in RoboElectric. But if you start now, you should use uh, the unit tests provided by the testing support library. 
And of course, we're using like Mokito for mocking out dependencies because your unit test should be in uh, isolation. Hamcrest for uh, matchers. Uh, we use Mokpack servers for the cases uh, where we testing uh, uh, network components, which is really close to the network layer. And of course, this is JUnit 4. Um, yeah, so this is kind of how a test looks like. It's not rocket science, it's really easy to write uh, once you set up the whole system. For acceptance tests and integration tests, we use the same, uh, the same test system. It's called Calabash. It's a Cupa, oh, so some of you are using it or are using it, good. So Calabash is a Cucumber-based uh, framework. It's also BBD style, so behavior-driven development style. Um, so as you see, like in Cucumber, you write your scenarios in this format, and these sentences basically uh, run uh, these methods there. So it's Ruby-based, but uh, it's not that complicated, so it's easy to so once you set up, it's really easy to write tests. It's more easier than writing in uh, unit tests, for example. And that's a dangerous thing, and I will tell you later why. Uh, of course, we are using Mopex server here also because that's an offline APK that we test, and we use Spoon. So Spoon is for running, um, running tests on different devices parallelly, and also it creates a really nice uh, HTML report. So if you haven't used it, it's really worth to take a look. UI tests, for UI tests we are using Espresso. Uh, fortunately, Espresso 2 uh, is out, so you don't have to use that Espresso 1, which was really hard to use. Uh, so we are using Espresso 2, it's coming from the testing support library now. And of course, it's JUnit 4. And it looks like, almost looks like a unit test, right? But it's really simple. Okay, so to stress test, as I mentioned, it's really easy to have a, st a stress test in Android. This, this is the command that you have to run. It's in the Android SDK. So, like, it's called monkey exerciser. You can, uh, oh, what it does, it just randomly clicks on your UI and randomly turns on or turns off some features from um, system features like network or brightness, or uh, it, it opens up the keyboard, hides the keyboard, so that's kind of stuff. Uh, you, can, uh, you can set up many things on it, and usually it fails on uh, error, so if, it's, if, the applica if your application crashes and it fails, so that's how you can uh, stress test your application. It's just running it, it, like you will say that, okay, number of events 1,000, and in 1,000 uh, touches it won't crash your system, then it's kinda okay. But you can use a bigger number, of course. Manual tests, yeah, developers, PM, UX, and support. Uh, we don't have separate testers, uh, because we, are, we don't think that's the way, so so when we do manual testing, then we are the ones who are doing it. For example, we had a really a big major UI refactor, and in that case, we tested a little bit manually that, okay, the UI really looks good and it's smooth, it's smooth everywhere. So that's, uh, that's how uh, testing, uh, so that's how the testing distribution should look like, but, um, I experienced many times the opposite, which is like a testing ice cream. It means that you have really few unit tests. Why bother, right? A few integration tests, more acceptance tests, because it's really easy to write acceptance tests once you set up. Because you write a feature, you have to write just like four acceptance tests for that feature. It's done. Otherwise, you had to write, I don't know, like 20 unit tests for it, right? So it's, you write more acceptance tests. And UI test, oh, it's really, it's really easy to do. Like, oh, there is a button, the color is there. Okay, the text is there, good. And if you switch the uh, switch, it switches, good. So you write many UI tests. And of course, at the top, because you don't trust your system, you do some manual tests. 
I experienced this in, in different companies, and you can recognize it if you feel that writing test does not worth it, or you feel that whenever you write a feature, you, write, you spend more time to fix the acceptance or UI test, then that's the case in your company. And you can <laughs> fix it by moving down the verifications into the bottom level. So whenever you feel that it's not worth to write a uh, test, that's the case. So this is how this is how our testing looks like. So these are basically different jobs on Jenkins. And here is the physical part. We have Mac Minis and we connected real phones to it. So real devices. We tried with uh, emulators also, but they were really flaky and they were slow. Real devices are fast and reliable, so we stick with it. Uh, maybe in the future we will try out like Amazon Cloud Device or uh, Google Test Cloud Lab. So Google Device Test something, <laughs> um, but um, but they are it's really new thing, so I don't think they are really stable. So in case if it fails one of our tests, then we just fix it and start the whole loop again. Uh, if it's good, then it will start an uploader job. So the uploader job uh, does what it tells you. It uploads the APK, but not just the APK. It also uploads the image assets for Play Store if you have, or the new description if you change your description or even for the Vets new test, test uh, text. And of course in multiple languages because you support multiple languages, right? Uh, and it's really easy to create an uploader job. That's the whole code. We use a triplets plugin. Uh, they did a really good job. That's the whole code you need. Plus you have to create a directory structure that they tell you to do. Like you have to put your descriptions and uh, your descriptions and images in different folders, but there is a structure uh, in the triplets play plugin uh, GitHub site. So once you upload it to uh, Google Play Store, so this whole thing was autom autonomous, and it went automatically. And this is where we have one button. So this is our control button. Uh, <clears throat> And because we upload, so I don't know if you check this, but we upload to the beta channel. So not to the production channel, so to the beta channel. And this one button is like publish to production. So every day uh, we build this job and we put a new APK into the beta channel. Uh, our company or all of our employees are on the beta channel, so they are the ones who, who get every day a new APK or more. <laughs> but hey, that's their job. <laughs> uh, and when you push to production, like there will be people that will like your new feature, and there will be some that could not enjoy your new feature because Android is really segmented. So there will be different screen sizes, GPUs, CPU architectures, so I'm sure that there will be some crashes. So how can you solve that? With the stage, stage rollout. So Play Store have this feature, stage rollout. And if you combine with a crash reporter system like Fabric, it's, uh, it's free. So you can use that too. And what we do is like release for 10%. And we check Fabric. We release it, we wait for like two, three days. After two, three days, if you don't see anything that it's major, then we, then we go to the next level like 30%, 50%, and 100%. If you find something that it's, it's not quite good, then we'll just say, okay, leave this APK in 10%, fix it, and release a new one for 30%. So that's how you can reach the 100%, and when you reach the 100%, it's sure that your APK, so your uh, product is working. And then you will have happy people. So that's the whole uh, CD system that we have, like pushing the code in, 
building it, testing it, pushing to Play Store, and stage and pushing to the users with a stage rollout. So this is how you can make sure that your product is good and the people could use uh, your product. Uh, so yeah, that was all. Thank you very much. So you can find this Prezi at allpargabos.com slash MDD. Uh, and Q&A if we have time. If you don't, you can find me anywhere and we can talk in details. Okay, good. Questions? Okay, so the question is where, uh, where we use Calabash and where we Espresso, so like in which features. So usually with uh, Espresso, that's UI testing, we just check that everything is in place on the UI. So like the buttons uh, are rendered right there, they have the right color, they have the right uh, text on it, and they place in the right uh, side. With Calabash, we test the functionality like, when you push the button, what will happen? It happens that you, what you expect or not. So with Espresso, we just te test basically a static UI. And with uh, Colabosch, we test the functionality. Another question. Dave. Uh, sorry, again? Sorry, I don't get it, so. Yeah, so to, to 10% or I don't know any percent that you. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, thank you very much. That's a good question, so. Um, so yeah, that's, you can't do really anything about it if you, <laughs> so if you put for 10%, 10% will get it and they could put one star reviews because it's crashing. And also others could put one star reviews that they are using the old one which is still crashing because the new one is the good one. But yeah, that's kind of trade-off. Uh, but I don't know, we never got the one star review because like a crash. We usually get one star reviews that when they are missing like the editing functionality for our Android app. And, but of course it's really stated it's Prezi viewer but we got one star reviews <laughs> because it's not, uh, you can't edit it. So yeah, you can't do anything with it. Like you can release to 100% and, but it's better to have just one or few people uh, met. Yep. Yeah. So this whole CD right now takes around Max one hour. So when we release and we see that there is a crash, usually we, we release at the end of the week. So we release for the weekend and then in the, uh, when we start the uh, week on Monday, we will see that okay, in these three days happened something. And on those three days or on those two days on the weekend, uh, nobody will put any new feature in. So, but usually we do it, uh, we don't, put new features until it's not released 100 per, for 100%. And of course, our new features, so there is two ways. Our new features in the feature branch. And also, if they are merged to the master, they are behind feature switches, which is kind of online feature switches, so you can uh, turn on and turn off uh, uh, online. 
So you can release with the new feature, but it's turned off the feature switch, and later on you can turn on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All we do is like Thursday evening, it's then Friday you can work on it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So thank you very much. If you have questions, then you can find me. Thank you.